Kuku Zambo, my name is Hokitomo. Welcome to Bhutan Storytelling Series. Today I'm going to read you Aji Dulin Dolma from the Folk Tales of Bhutan. Dampu Dimpu. Once upon a time, there was a king who had three daughters. They were called Aji Yuli Dolma or Princess Turquoise Tara. Aji Seri Dolma, or Princess Golden Tara, and Aji Dulin Dolma, Princess Copper Tara. Each Aji was as beautiful as the others. The fame of their beauty and the wealth of their father's kingdom had reached far and wide. There were many suitors who wished to marry them. The Ajis were well aware of the suitors. But each of them secretly wanted to marry only say Chanchudoji, a prince of the northern kingdom, for he was said to be not only the wealthiest, but also the handsomest and the kindest and the gentlest of all the suitors. Se Chanchudoji also wanted to marry one of the princesses, but he wanted to find out which of them was the kindest and the humblest. He therefore disguised himself as a beggar and stood at the gates of the princess's palace, begging to be employed in the palace. When the king saw him, he took pity on the poor beggar and made him the cowherd. Now it was the custom that every day the Ajis, the princesses, took turns to help to herd and milk the cows. So on the first day, it was Aji Yuli Dolma who came to do the milking. It had rained during the night and it was muddy everywhere. So Aji Yuli Dolma told the cow herd to kneel down in the mud so that she could sit on his back while she milked the cows. In this way, she did not dirty herself. Say Janchu Doji did as he was told. When all the cows had been milked, Ajiyuli Dolma made a symbolic offering of the milk to the gods and deities, then to each of the kings of the four directions. Finally, she secretly made an offering to Se Janshidoji, sprinkling some milk in the air, saying, Chui Shi Shi, Se Janshidoji, I make this offering, may it be pleasing to Prince Janshidoji. The milk that she sprinkled fell into the cow herder's mouth. Se Janshidoji professed surprise and said, Aji, the milk you offered to Se Janshidoji has come into my mouth. What should I do with it? Shall I swallow it or spit it out? Spit it out was a scornful answer. The milk has made me thirsty, Ajiyuli Dolma. Please let me drink a cupful, begged Se Janchidoji. I will not waste milk on a dirty beggar, was the reply. Soon it was lunchtime, and Ajiyuli Dolma sat on a high rock and ate her rice and meat and let Janchidoji sit far away from her and eat his poor meal of kuli, buckwheat, and chili paste. As the midday sun got hot, as Yulidoma fell asleep in the shade of a tree. Se Danchidoji watched her. Although she was unkind and rude, he had to be sure whether they were destined to be together. So he took a turquoise ring off his finger and tossed it in the air, singing, Princess Turquoise Tara, the turquoise ring I offer, if we are to share a common fate, May it fall in your hands. If not, then let it come to me. The turquoise ring fell into his own lap. As she woke up and chided him. What was that you mumbling about? Even a beggar has songs of his joy and songs of his sorrow, came the quick reply. As dusk fell and it was time to go home, Sejanshu Doji gathered the cattle and returned them homewards. Ajiyuli Dolma made him carry her across the river because she did not want to get wet. So he carried the Aji on his back. With his left hand, he held the Aji's leg behind his back 
and with his other hand he held the stick with which he drove the cattle home. The Aji was repulsed at having to touch a beggar, but she had to hang on tightly. On the second day, it was the second princess, Seri Dorma's turn to milk the cows, and she was just like her older sister. Say Janchu Doji knew that his fate was not tied with either Ajuli Dolma or Seri Dolma. On the third day, it was the youngest princess, Ajidulin Dolma's turn. As on the other days, the palace was wet and muddy, and Say Janchu Doji offered to kneel down so that she could sit on him and milk the cows. But she was shocked and refused saying, no, no, I will not do such a thing. When she made the offering and Se Janshu Doji's share fell into his mouth, he asked, Ajiduling Dolma, what should I do? Your offerings to Se Janshu Doji has fallen into my mouth. Shall I swallow it or shall I spit it out? If it's fallen into your mouth, it must be for a good reason. Swallow it by all means. Then when he asked her for a cup of milk to drink, she said, Drink all you can. There's enough milk for you to drink. During lunchtime, she insisted that they sit together and share their meals. After their lunch, like her sisters, Ajiduling Doma also fell asleep in the shade of a tree. Se Janj Doji sat by her side and watched her. He then took off his copper ring and, as on the previous days, tossed it in the air, singing, Princess Copper Tara, this copper ring I offer. If we are to share a common fate, may it fall in your hand. If not, let it return to me. When the princess woke up, she was surprised to find a ring around her fingers. Se Janj Doji, of course, denied any knowledge of it when she questioned him. Perhaps it's a good omen, she thought to herself, and decided to keep it on. When they returned home in the evening, Sei Janj Doji offered to carry her across the river, but she said she preferred to hold his hand and cross the river. By the end of the third day, Sei Janj Doji knew which princess he wanted to marry, but he had to absolutely be sure that Ajidulin Dolma was truly the right wife for him, so he had to test her further. The king now decided it was time for his daughters to get married, so he invited all the suitors to come and seek their brides. He decreed that each of the suitors would have to perform a heroic feat before he could qualify to marry any of his daughters. The suitors came from the four directions and they performed wondrous and heroic feats. On the appointed day, the suitors presented themselves bearing the testimonies of their feats. One of them had dragged a dragon out of the skies, its body still steaming with moisture while spitting out flames of fire. Another had tamed a chosen or a sea serpent and now it has slithered and crawled behind his master. The third one led the leaders of the Sinpos, the demons, on a leash of thick leather after he had subdued the Sinpos in the region. The day before the ceremony, at which each of the three princesses had to present a scarf to the prince of her choice, Se Doji took a newborn puppy and put it in Ajiduling Dolma's bed. Then he woke up and said, You have just given birth to this freak. Now, if you don't choose me for your husband, I shall tell everybody about this. The Aji had no choice but to agree. The next day, as the first rays of sun touched the palace rooftops, the ceremony took place. Everybody was very pleased as Ajiyuli Dolma confidently walked up to the Eastern King and presented her scarf to him. Ajisevi Dolma presented her scarf to the Western King. Poor Ajiyuli Dolma held her head down 
and demurely handed her scarf to the poor and dirty man standing in the crowd. Everybody was shocked and repulsed. The king was so angry and humiliated that he had immediately banished them from his kingdom. Se Janshi Doji and Ajiduling Dulma traveled for many days. They crossed many valleys and climbed many mountains. One day, they reached a big herd of cattle. Ajiduling Dulma said, I wonder whose cattle these are. Would it not be pleasant if we were the owners? Perhaps it would, came his languid reply. Then he said he would go to the herder's camp to beg for some food. When he came back, he brought hot and delicious food, saying how kind the herders were. For the next few days, they passed through fields of barley, wheat and mustard, and large herds of horses, sheep and goats. Each time, Sejanj Doji would bring his wife good food from the kind herders. In fact, all the animals belonged to him, and his herders naturally gave the best to their prince. One day, they reached a beautiful big zone, situated in a broad valley between a silvery river that meandered through the entire valley. It was exquisitely beautiful, as Yiduling Dolma thought. This palace is even more grand than my father's, and the place more beautiful. Say Judge Doji, as usual, went into the zone to beg for some food. And Ajiduling Doma waited outside the gate. As she waited for her husband, she began talking to a man who said he was the sweeper of the palace. When she asked him who owned the zone, the sweeper was surprised. Don't you know? This is Se Janshu Doji's palace. Then Ajiduling Dolma asked, Is Se Janshu Doji in his palace? Did you not see him? retorted the sweeper, even more surprised. He just went into the zong, dressed as a beggar. Before Ajiduling Dolma could say anything, Se Janshu Doji came out of the gates and welcomed her to his palace. Then he explained to her that he had to put her through the test because he wanted to be very sure that they were indeed destined to be king and queen. He added, I wanted a queen who is kind and humble and you are truly the right queen for me. What followed in the next few days were lavish feasts and celebrations to commemorate the marriage of Se Janshu Doji and Ajiduling Dolma. Soon the news of the wedding was heard far and wide. When Ajisari Dolma and Ajiyuli Dolma heard about it, they came to extend their good wishes to the newly wed wild couple, while their father, filled with remorse and shame, came to beg for forgiveness for his ill treatment to them. Say Janj Doji and Ajiduling Dolma not only forgive him, but showered him with precious gifts. The end. <laughs>